Hey everyone and welcome to this short little training video that I've put together for you. Uh, it's about one of the topics which is, is pretty close to my heart. And for those of you that have been through one of my programs, you'll notice that I've got my uh, trusty flip chart here. Uh, always find this is a great medium for uh, using as a, as a training tool. So today I want to speak to you about this idea of values-based decision making. So it's a little technique that I often add into some of the leadership programs that uh, I deliver. And one of the reasons I like it so much is it has a number of different applications and can be easily transferable between organisations. The only thing it uh, is reliant on, though, is making sure that you have, if your organisation has clearly defined values. Okay, that's the key to this, knowing what they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this little, little technique works, but I'm going to do it in relation to synergy and values and give you a real real life story so that it just makes a little bit of sense about how you could apply it uh, in your in your workplace. So it's quite a simple process because all you need to do is ask yourself one question and you ask yourself that one question for each of the values that your organisation has. So as you can see here, Synergen has five values and the question that I ask for each of those five values is this. What does this mean for integrity, customer, people, excellence and legacy? So let me give you the, the example of, of, of how it works. So in the scenario that, that happened to us, uh, we had a prospective client approach us and they were really, really keen to get started, uh, but coming from a place of not having a lot of uh, content developed. So they really put the pressure on us to launch and in hindsight launch before we were probably ready to because we didn't feel that we had quite enough development time. So we ask ourselves this, what does this mean for our integrity if we decide to go ahead with this project? Well the first thing is it's going to be a bit of a, a, bit of a challenge here for us at an integrity level because we know that any successful leadership program needs a certain amount of development time. Uh, a certain amount of coordination, there's a whole lot that goes into making sure a program is successful. And so automatically, before I even get to the others, it's gonna be a question for us as an in integrity. What does it mean for customer? Well, in one hand, we may have the customer that's happy because we're being agile, we're being responsive. But the reality is though, the end result that we're gonna deliver may not be their, their expectations, may not meet their expectations. And so when it comes back to it, they may, they may put aside the fact that they put the pressure on us early and there may be a challenge there. What does it mean for our people? Well, it means there's a whole lot of pressure put on my team to actually try to rush through this development. Now they know they're not doing their best work as well. So there's a challenge there for us. What does it mean for excellence? Well, it means probably most likely that the program's not gonna be as good as it could be. And what does it mean for legacy? Well, if our program isn't as good as it could be, what sort of legacy we're going to be leaving behind with the people that come through our programs? So what we've done is ask ourselves this simple question, what does it mean for? Five times. And what, what it does is allows me to say that in, in all essence, if we go ahead with this program, we're not actually really going to satisfy all our internal values as an organisation. Now, if we're not meeting our internal values as an organisation, how are we possibly doing it for the customer? I think what the, the secondary part of this is, is it allows us to go back to the customer and say, look, one of the things we've done is we've looked at what happens if we do this, and these are going to be some of the consequences. This technique gives you a really well-balanced perspective in terms of any significant decision, because it forces you to look at it from a number of different perspectives. So if you've got four values in your organisation, obviously you would have four here. If you've got six, you would have six here. It's a really, really effective tool for when you've got a significant decision in front of you. So, and I really encourage you to have it go at it because what it also does is it puts you on solid ground. So if you're at a frontline level or you're a middle manager or something like that and you make a significant decision and your senior manager comes up to you and says, why did you make that decision? And you walk them through the process you went through. They may not agree with you, but at least I'll acknowledge that you went through a, an effective process for coming to the decision that you came to. So I think it really puts you on solid ground. And it also allows you to really make a well-informed decision. And the other little benefit that comes from this is that if you are in a specialist role, so you might be uh, a specialist HR person, you might be a specialist safety person, sometimes it's easy to always look at things through your lens 
through your area of speciality. What this does is allow you to look outside of that and just factor in these different perspectives. So it's a really simple little tool. It doesn't take too long to implement, which is why one of the reasons why I like it, but it's super powerful, super effective, and trust has been of some value for you. So uh, have a go at it, and looking forward to hearing what you think. If you really wanna uh, shoot me through some feedback, that would be great. Uh, I'm pretty easy to find, and the fact that you're watching this video means you're already connected to me on LinkedIn. So uh, love to hear your feedback, and see you with the next video.